The country is still like the presence of the strong democratic institution, face the constraint of the election system, and it is threatened with the return of an authoritarian rule again. Cambodia 1993 constitution formulated of the Paris Peace Agreement of 1991. It is a constitutional monarchy with a liberal pluralist democracy. That means it's a multi-party political system. Elections are held at the national and the commune level commune level in comparing between like sub district. But some people told me that maybe barangay. The election for the National Assembly have been held in 1993, 1998, 2003, 2008. So there were four National Assembly elections and two commune council elections was held. The royal government of Cambodia formed on the basis of election internationally recognized as a free election was established on September 1993. Because at that time, in that election in 1993, conduct by contact. Since 1998, they established a second chamber, <coughs> namely the Senate. Since 1999, their new establishment, namely Sub National Council, District Council, Provincial Council, City Council was created, but this system is voted by commune councillor, not voted by people, by the commune councillor, or you can refer that is electoral colleague. Election system of Senate sub-national council do not reflect the principle of universal, universal suffrage. Most political parties have no clear democratic procedure for the selection of candidate for the party list. Cambodian political electoral system is a party list system. The voter has the ballot by the party, not by the individual candidate. So the party has power to select the candidate or remove the candidate from the opposition, even they got elected already. But if the party feel that is something wrong with the elect official, the elect official, they can remove them from the position. But however, election in Cambodia represent, represent represent other step to toward the electoral democracy and thus improve credible, uh, credible increase in political space and technical arrangement. For instance, relate to the political space, around 90% of total 1,621 commune has a councillor from variety of the political party, both ruling party and opposition party. That's something the political space now, space now have been created at the local level. However, there is constraint with the electoral system, which use the party system, and also the formula of allocating the seat. Very a little bit complicated about the seat, calculate the seat. It's not so much encourage the small party, minor party to get the remain seat, 
all the remaining seat go to the winner. So this this uh, electro system and the formula of calculate the seat really in favor the winner. So the winner take all. This something problem in our system. There are other key concerns happen in the election. It's still a problem with the partnership, sorry, partisanship of the election official, like here, like Comlex, but we are not our election authority, namely National Electoral Commission not independent, not well independent like Comlex. Very partisan, especially in favor to the ruling party. Our problem happened in the election also the voter list, voter registration that affect a lot of loss of voter rights, especially the young voter. Successive failure to enforce proper electoral standard. They are still maintaining the cohesive tactic over voter and political party. At the ground, the local authorities still use sophisticated intimidation of cohesive against the opposition on non ruling party at the, at the village at the commune level. There are still serious disparity in the media access. The ruling party control all the, the TV and radio. We have freedom of the free media, but however, people not so much have practice to read, to read the newspaper because they're poor and they have not really uh, like to read. So they like more to listen and to watch. So that's why they allow the space freedom of the free media. But however, they control all the TV and the radio by the ruling party. They are abuse of state resources very much in favor of ruling party. Government official, military, police. If I can say in Philippines during election time, the comrade like very strong. They, they have uh, patrol the military, try to uh, push them in the calm. But in Cambodia, the military police very much still engaged support campaign for the ruling party. Lack of will to acknowledge and to resolve the election violation or election uh, irregularity by the election commission. Unwillingness to accept election result, we always have sorry, we always have the problem uh, when announce the election result, the opposition already get the election result. That's uh, that's proof. How we respond to that? Let me to quick. Our belief in the fragile democracy like Cambodia is our work is not just focused on election time, but we also look at beyond the election. We aggressively work for the campaign advocacy during the uh, post-election period, I mean five years, is term of uh, our uh, National Assembly and Commune Councilor is five years. So we work on the reform and to strengthen citizen participation in democratic governance and decision making, decision making, especially to hold the elect official, elect political party to 
accountable citizen. Because we, we think that only that democracy and the meaningful election that can benefit to, a, to the citizen, only that citizen have power, not just during election time, that they receive give little money and attention by the political party, but must make sure that this power can be used after election also. So we we engage in election period our work. It's not just about the counting, voting counting, but we start from the voter registration. Because the voter registration voter is also a lot of problem, was a lot of problem that affect lots of voter rights, especially the young voter turned to the eight year, 18 years old, the new voter. So we conduct audit, monitor voter registration, audit the voter list, make sure that this, the list is quality. Yeah. And then we go to the monitor the voting counting, and we learn experience from the number how to conduct election monitoring during voting and counting, especially conduct recount. But after election, during election time after election, we also try to check people why they not vote. Because in Cambodia, when you not vote, you don't have intelligible ink in the finger. So we ask them why they not vote. So this this uh, give a lot of information feedback to us that we are trying to do something during the post election period. Why people not vote? Maybe the the administration affect them, they are not able to cast the ballot, or they not intention to vote, they lost motivation. So they, we have to check. After election immediately we have to check that. During post election period, we conduct many activities, include Parliament Watch, we observe the performance of elect offshore. We also conduct the scorecard on the fulfillment of the elect government because all the elect government, elect political party, they have promise, they have platform. So we have to uh, to to work on that. But sometimes platform and uh, promise so big, the terminology cannot measure how they want to achieve for this uh, five year term. So we we always encourage citizens to to give the benchmark what citizens want to see the the this five year term fulfillment by the elect government and elect political party. And then ask citizens to give the scorecard on the fulfillment. So my short conclusion, this our work is is get have been carried out with the work a lot partner, stakeholder and try to encourage many people right from the civil society, citizen, from the village, in particular the electorate to participate in election. And we try to motivate our voter to use the name and sorry to use the term voter all the time, not not just for the election time, but all the time. Because the term voter is very powerful. In Cambodian language, we use the term meaning own of the voter. Sorry, own of the vote. So remind them they have power. They're not citizens, they're not other citizens. They have power. So the power should, can be exercised during election time and after election. That can remind the elect official very careful because they are the voter all the time, not just election time. So this this campaign we work and try to to educate the, uh, the, the voter and confer a chief significant cooperation with all ranks of civil society, include the 
the our member organization from the national level to the grassroots level that engage them to involve in the our activity. Maybe my time is finished. I'm sorry, and I'm ready to answer any answer any question if you have. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Banya. We will have occasions to ask questions um, uh, a few minutes later. Uh, but before we call on our discussion, I would like to acknowledge other members of, of the audience, distinguished guests uh, who are here today. Uh, the Dean of the College of Science, Dr. Joey Balmaceda, and the Chairperson of the Department of Geography, uh, Professor Dardine Sena Gutierrez. We have a very interesting discussion. Uh, she's an assistant professor at the Department of Political Science, School of Social Sciences of our friendly neighbor in Katipunan, Ateneo de Manila University. Let's give a very warm welcome to uh, Maria Elisa Jaime Lau. My, my discussion will be brief, so there will be more time for questions. But I'd like to talk first about the link between Cambodia's COMFREL and the Philippine National Movement for Free Elections, or NAMFREL. The link is very strong. Both came at a time when monitoring elections was crucial for fledgling democracies. Both organizations, according to NAMFREL, which congratulated Mr. Pania, in their latest newsletter, are members of the Asian Network for Free Elections based in Bangkok, of which Mr. Pania is now the vice chairman. I recall when Namfrel was in Cambodia as an observer during the 1990s, one of the observations they made was that there's really a very different character to um, Asian organizations monitoring Asian elections. Because if you have, for example, international observers from, let's say, Western countries, they have a very different way um, of dealing with states undergoing elections, monitoring. They say that if you're an Asian organization monitoring an Asian election, there's more of a relational aspect. There, there's more of a, there's something, uh, there's a sort of more understanding between organizations rather than um, the other international observers and I think that's a very important linkage. Both organizations also through their core competency lies in election monitoring, though their core competency lies in election monitoring, have come to realize that elections alone do not make a democracy and both have, aside from advocating free and fair elections and electoral reform, have also sought for good governance and accountability in their respect. I'd like to look at four issues which I think resonate both with the Cambodian and the Philippine experience as a springboard for a discussion later. The role of the women and the youth, uh, the ruling elite, campaign finance and the use of state resources, and finally, the use of the time between elections. On the role of the women and the youth, perhaps what can be shared by the Philippine experience is its recent round of elections by a PICOS machines. While questions still linger about the soundness of the technology, there is no doubt that the interest that it generated, especially among first-time voters, was strong. The youth, or the 18 to 25-year-old bracket, now make up a strong 40% of the voting population. Their election experience is tied with the usage of social networking sites via the internet, mobile phones, as well as more traditional mediums such as TV. This is a game changer, not only for candidates, but for electoral reform organizations as well, as they try to shape the discourse through new media. Women, on the other hand, have had the right to suffrage since the 1930s and continue to show strongly in electoral campaigns. The challenge for the next generation, though, of Filipina women or Filipinas in politics would be to go beyond the paradigm of taking the place of husbands, brothers, and sons. On the ruling elite, this second point springs from the last thought. Both Cambodia and the Philippines do have a well-entrenched political elite, 
and perhaps both can benefit by more clearly defining the rules regarding the role of the opposition. This can be done by any number of ways, defining the party system, providing a system of incentives and disincentives, all with the idea in mind of fostering healthy political competition that will better the leadership choices for citizens come election time. On campaign finance and the use of state resources, this has also become another sticking point for Philippine electoral reform advocates. Without significant reform, as in the Cambodian case, little can be done to curb the grossly disproportionate spending during campaign periods that translate into future corruption for investors in the scheme. Campaign finance is very much tied to political party reform and state funding for parties. Is this the route that Cambodian electoral advocates such as Comfell want to take as well? And finally, on the time between elections. Political education, not just electoral education, which is timely, regular, and sound, is an often refrain for the conclusions of discussions such as these on electoral reform. The problem is, with all that needs to be reformed institutionally, even the off-season between elections becomes increasingly hectic. It is commendable then when electoral reform organizations such as Comfrel have a set agenda on how this time is spent on citizen education. In closing, I think there is a larger role to be played by such on-the-ground institutions such as Comfrel in re-examining the electoral system and perhaps the larger political and governmental form of their respective, of, of Cambodia, for example, or the Philippines. This is where strategic partnerships with, with academic institutions, research centers, and think tanks can come into play and provide a viable template for political reform. Thank you. Thanks very much, Melissa. We now have opened the floor for for questions and queries. But before that, I would also like to acknowledge the presence from the Center for International Relations, Dr. Gina Omadi. And I would also like to uh, inform you that um, we, the, the UP Third World Study Center has a blog, uptwsc.blogspot.com, where you can find updates, uh, audiovisual recordings, and, and transcripts of the different events of the Third World Study Centers, Center. So now I would like to ask members of the audience to ask questions. Maybe uh, you can probably introduce yourself first and uh, your course or the institution where you come from. You can use a microphone.